Okay, let's go ahead and start talking about reference angles. So, uh, reference angles are kind of an important concept in trigonometry. Uh, they help you evaluate trig functions for larger angles, or for uh, more unusual angles, or for negative angles, things like that. So, we've actually already talked about a few techniques for some of those. Um, we've talked about the even-odd properties, and the uh, periodic properties, and coterminal angles, things like that. Uh, so we could use those, but <clears throat> uh, reference angles is uh, another concept that we could apply. Um, and it sort of works more generally, so that's nice. Anyway, um, we'll talk about what a reference angle is, how to find it, and we'll do a bunch of examples. So uh, the reference angle for a given angle theta is uh, the acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side of theta. Okay? So um, when we talk about reference angles, we're only talking about angles in standard position, so we only care about that. Okay, also, um, when we're talking about finding reference angles, uh, we only care about non-quadrantal angles. So in other words, uh, remember those definitions from a bunch of videos ago. Um, quadrantal, uh, an angle is called quadrantal if it lies on an axis. So if the terminal side is on the axis and the angle's in standard position, uh, that's quadrantal. Uh, we don't care about angles like that when we deal with reference angles. Okay, because for quadrantal angles, they're actually not too complicated. Um, it's easy to sort of get a coterminal angle that we know stuff about with those. So we kind of exclude those from this discussion. Um, we only care about non-quadrantal angles. So in other words, uh, just angles that lie in a quadrant. Okay, so that's all we're going to care about here. Okay, so um, let's talk about how to find these. So there's four cases really. Um, theta, the terminal side of theta could be in quadrant one, could be in quadrant two, quadrant three, or quadrant four. Okay. Also, um, if theta happens to be larger than two pi radians or smaller than zero radians, uh, we have to do something else first, but we'll talk about that later and do some examples with that. So, uh, four possibilities. First, let's assume that theta is between 0 and 2 pi. <clears throat> so let's say uh, if, let's use a different color here. So uh, if, if 0 radians is less than theta is less than 2 pi radians. Okay, and again, um, we're talking about radians here, but uh, we can also convert everything to degrees, right? So if 0 degrees is less than theta is less than 360 degrees, Okay, so we can get reference angles for angles in degrees also. Um, okay, then this is what we do. So if uh, theta is between 0 and 2 pi, okay, first let's block this off here. And uh, let's go ahead and draw, um, if theta is in quadrant 1, okay, if theta is in quadrant 1, uh, that would be something like this. Okay, so here's our x-axis, here's our y-axis. So if theta is in quadrant 1, uh, then vertex at the origin, right? Standard position, so standard position angles. Quadrant one, uh, it'd be somewhere up in here, okay? So here's theta. So the terminal side of theta is here. Now what's the acute angle between the terminal side and the uh, positive x-axis here, okay? Or just uh, between the terminal side and the x-axis, okay? So remember the reference angle is the acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side of theta. So, uh, well, in this case, the reference angle is just theta, right? So theta already is an acute angle, okay? So this acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side is just is theta. Okay, so that's a simple case. If theta is between 0 and 2 pi, and theta is already in quadrant 1, um, or if theta is in quadrant 1, then the reference angle is just theta, okay? So let's go ahead and write that down. Uh, the reference angle, which I'll abbreviate ref angle like this, the reference angle is uh, theta, okay? That's all it is. Okay, uh, what about quadrant 2? Okay, so what if theta is in quadrant 2? Okay, so if theta is in quadrant 2, then things get um, a little more complicated, not really difficult even, just uh, there's, it's less simple than just theta. Okay, so x-axis, y-axis. So if theta is in quadrant 2, that would be somewhere, anywhere in quadrant 2, so we'll just draw it arbitrarily right here, I guess. Okay. So here's our angle theta. Okay, and again, we'll do some examples with actual numbers uh, later on, um, maybe in this video, but definitely at least starting in the next video. Um, so anyway, uh, theta is in quadrant two, then it'll be right here. So initial side, positive x-axis, vertex at the origin. Here's the terminal side. Now remember, uh, the reference angle is the acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side of theta. Okay? So this angle here is not acute, right? It's too large. Remember, acute means between zero degrees and 90 degrees, or zero radians and pi over two radians, okay? So the acute angle would actually be this guy right here. Okay, this here is the acute angle. But what is this? What is this angle right here? Let's, let's zoom in on that. Okay, well, uh, this angle is theta, right? 
what's this entire angle all the way across? Uh, that's pi, right? Pi radians, okay, uh, straight line all the way across uh, like that. So that's pi. So if this going all the way across is pi and going only up to here is theta, what's the difference between them? Okay, if I have all the way across being pi, and then if I only go up to here, up to this angle, okay, if I only go up to here, that's theta, then the difference between them is pi minus theta. Okay? Pi minus theta. Because if I go all the way, that's pi. If I only go this way, that's theta. So if I want to get what's left over in here, that's pi minus theta. Okay? So if I take all of it and subtract off this, uh, this part here, then I just have pi minus theta left. Okay? So that's, um, in that case, the uh, reference angle the reference angle is uh, pi minus theta. Okay, so we'll zoom back out here. Okay, so that's uh, if theta is in quadrant one, the reference angle is just theta. If theta is in quadrant two, the reference angle is pi minus theta. Uh, and remember, this only applies if theta is between zero and two pi. And if theta is not between zero and two pi, then we'll talk about uh, what to do after that. It's really just a tiny extra step. So anyway, um, let's see. Let's separate all these here. Uh, okay, now what if theta is in uh, quadrant three? Okay, so we did quadrant one, quadrant two, and now let's talk about quadrant three. So if theta is in quadrant three, uh, then what do we got going on? Well, let's draw that. X axis, Y axis. So if theta is in quadrant three, uh, oops, that'd be somewhere down here. So we'll just arbitrarily put it anywhere in quadrant three. So here's theta. Okay, now again, a uh, reference angle is the acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side of theta. Okay, here's the terminal side of theta. Here's the uh, closest piece of the x-axis. Okay, so that's where the acute angle is going to go. So again, you got to be careful, right? Um, here's the terminal side of theta. So if we want to go to the x-axis, we can go here or we can go here. But make sure you go to the closer one because remember, a reference angle has to be acute. Okay, the reference angle is the acute angle here. So uh, always go to the closer piece of the x-axis. So that's why here, go to the closer piece. Here, go to the closer piece. Okay? And here, go to the closer. So we're going to go to the closer piece here. And when I say piece, I mean the negative uh, half of the x-axis versus the positive half in this case. Okay? Um, and here, we went to the positive half of the x-axis. Here's the negative half of the x-axis. So in this case, the closer side is going to be the negative. So the reference angle is going to be this acute angle in here. Okay? So what is that? Well, um, it's going to be similar to uh, what we did in quadrant two. So if theta puts us all the way over here, and if uh, pi puts us just in here, okay, so pi radians puts us all the way across like this, theta puts us all the way across, and then this extra stuff here, how do we get this leftover stuff? Well, what we do is we just take theta and subtract pi, okay? Because theta brings us all the way around, like this, uh, up to this angle here. Pi brings us over to here, okay? Pi brings us over to here. Now, if we want to subtract off all this, just so we just have this acute angle, uh, then what we do is take theta minus pi, because that gives us only this piece in here. Okay? Because again, theta is all of it like this. Uh, theta is all of it. So we want to subtract off just this stuff. And if we subtract off just this stuff, then we're just going to have this left over, which is what we want. Okay? So this stuff is pi, so take theta, all of it, subtract off pi, this stuff, and we end up with just this stuff, which is what we want. Okay, so theta minus pi. So uh, the reference angle then, reference angle is uh, theta minus pi. Okay, now uh, let's do quadrant four. And I want to point out, um, I don't recommend that you just straight up memorize these. Uh, I think what uh, might be better to do is just to understand uh, how these work. You know, understand how we're uh, filling in this chart here. So just understand that if you're in quadrant one, the reference angle is just the angle. Okay, understand that if you're in quadrant two. I have to subtract it like this to get that distance. Okay, don't just memorize it because it might be kind of confusing. Uh, it's easy to mix up pi minus theta and theta minus pi because one's for quadrant two, the other's for quadrant three. It's really easy to mix those up. It's, so it's really just a lot better um, to understand how we're doing this rather than just memorize the result uh, for sure. And then last, theta in quadrant four. Okay, theta in quadrant four. So if theta is in quadrant four, uh, let's draw that x-axis, y-axis. Um, so if theta is in quadrant four, let's go ahead and draw that. So that'll be something kind of sort of like this, so just arbitrarily somewhere in quadrant four. So theta, okay, there's theta. Um, 
Now, again, remember a reference angle, uh, that's the acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side of theta. So just like with all these other three, we want to go to the closest piece, or the closest half of the x-axis. Well, the closest half is going to be this guy right here, okay, the positive x-axis. So what's that then? Well, theta brings us all the way around over here. How are we going to get this piece here? Well, what if we go all the way around full circle? If we go all the way around full circle, what's that? That's uh, 2 pi, right? So if we go all the way around, let's zoom in on that. Uh, if we go all the way around full circle, that's 2 pi radians. Okay, that's 2 pi radians. Um, but what if we just want this piece in here? So theta puts us around here. So let's take one full revolution, subtract off of this piece, so that all we have left is this. So in other words, go one full revolution, that's 2 pi, subtract off of this piece, which is theta, and then we have just this piece left, which is what we want. So in other words, uh, 2 pi minus theta is the reference angle here. Okay? So if we're in quadrant 4, then the reference angle uh, the reference angle is uh, 2 pi minus theta. Okay. okay, and again, we've expressed all this in terms of radians, but we could just as easily say in terms of degrees. So uh, theta is just still just theta. Um, or we could say 180 degrees minus theta. Uh, theta minus 180 degrees, or 360 degrees minus theta. Okay, so radians, degrees, it's all, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. Okay, so this is, um, this is what we do if theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Okay? What if theta is less than 0, or what if theta is larger than 2 pi? Well, then what we do is get coterminal angles, right? So uh, if theta is not between 0 and 2 pi, so let's go ahead and write this down. Um, if theta, if theta is not uh, between 0 and 2 pi, then first, Find the angle between 0 and 2 pi. That is coterminal with theta. Okay, so remember we talked a lot about coterminal angles. Um, that is coterminal with theta. And I'm kind of out of room to write, but so basically, if theta is not between 0 and 2 pi, then first what you want to do is find the angle between 0 and 2 pi that's coterminal with theta. Okay. So, uh, for example, if theta, let's say theta were somewhere between, I don't know, well, let's, let's think of it like this. So if we go all the way around, and if theta does this, yeah, theta is in quadrant 1, but notice theta is one full revolution around, so the reference angle can't be theta, right? Reference angle can't be theta anymore, so let's cover this up. So uh, the reference angle can't be theta anymore because uh, it's no longer acute, okay? We went one full revolution. So in this case, uh, we have this thing going on. Theta is not between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, this theta is larger than 2 pi, because we go one full revolution and then up here. So what we do is first find the, uh, the angle between 0 and 2 pi that is coterminal with theta. Okay? Which is the angle between 0 and 2 pi coterminal with theta? Well, in this case, all we have to do is subtract 2 pi once, and then we get the angle that's coterminal with it. Okay? And then I'm out of room to write it over here. But then what you do next is just apply this reasoning here with the coterminal angle. Okay? So uh, let's fix this picture again. Okay, so again, that's uh, kind of important there. So what we do is just uh, find the coterminal angle that's, be uh, that's between 0 and 2 pi, and then just apply this reasoning with that coterminal angle. Okay? And it's all the same. And we'll do some examples with that uh, in a later video. So anyway, if theta is between 0 and 2 pi, just straight up do this. If theta is not between 0 and 2 pi, first get that coterminal angle between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, there's only going to be one such angle that's between 0 and 2 pi. So what we do is take theta, um, add or subtract 2 pi or 360 degrees, depending, um, as often as you need to until you get a coterminal angle that's between 0 and 2 pi or between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. Once you have that angle between those two values, uh, then apply this reasoning to that angle. Okay? And again, I really strongly recommend that you do not memorize this chart, just to understand how we filled it in. Okay? So just know that from the definition of a reference angle, it's the acute angle between the x-axis and the terminal side of theta. So that's uh, using that definition, that's sort of how we filled this whole thing in here. So if you just remember how that works, it's going to be much simpler than trying to keep straight, well, is it pi minus theta or theta minus pi? When do I use the 2 pi? It's just going to be too confusing. So um, I guess just to keep this video short, we'll stop it here, and then we'll start examples in the next video.
Okay. So we'll do a lot of examples with this, uh, some simple examples first, then more complicated ones after that. So that's uh, the definition and an explanation of reference angles.